Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube, your new source. And without any further ado, my name is Leon Jones. I'm going to get right into the news story. This takes place in my hometown. Now, for everybody to understand that no matter where you live in this day and age, violence happens. Man was shot in a Walmart parking lot. Now, when I continue this news story, you're going to find out what race this person really is. And it's going to surprise you. But before I get into that, let's get into the newscast. An 18-year-old was shot in the West Lafayette Walmart parking lot Sunday about 6.22 p.m. And this is right here where I live. I live in Lafayette, right across the Wabash River. It's West Lafayette, home of the Purdue Boilermakers. Now, West Lafayette police officers responded to a call, and then they transported the victim to a local hospital for treatment. Now, his injury is not life-threatening at this time. However, a press release from WLVD reads, the victim reportedly knows the suspect, according to the press release, but the investigation is ongoing as of Sunday night. Believe it or not, again, as we go back, and talk about the suspect. The suspect was arrested. This is the suspect right here. If you all thought he was black, you have been surprised because as you know, white men are also violent as well. In fact, we've had a few shootings that involve Caucasian men here in my city of Lafayette, Indiana. Now, without further ado, let's crack the video. Fair use. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Quit Now Indiana will help you break your tobacco addiction. No a teenager has been arrested in connection to a weekend shooting at the Walmart in West Lafayette. According to West Lafayette Police, 18-year-old Cade Monroe Davies Gaeta of Lafayette was taken into custody around 10 o'clock this morning. Davies Gaeta was arrested after a search warrant was served at a home in Athens, Indiana. The initial call came in just after 6.20 on Sunday evening. Officers found an 18-year-old man with a gunshot wound in the Walmart parking lot on Northwestern Avenue. Police say the victim met with at least one person in a car that was parked at the east end of the lot. Police say the victim knew the suspect, but investigators have not released the nature of their relationship. The victim has been treated and released at the hospital. THC nicotine doesn't matter what's in a vape. Everything about vaping is dangerous, including the device. Well, I'm just going to say this right now. Why are we having all this violence? Now, let me be clear to you. The suspect in that shooting was also arrested. So there was justice. Just bear with me while I pull that up again so you will understand what I'm talking about here when it comes to what goes on here. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. K. 
getting back to where we left off, let me share my screen with you one more time. Now, going back, you've heard the video. Now, of course, this is from WLFI TV 18 in my town, Lafayette, West Lafayette. Now, there was a shooting that went on where an 18-year-old man was involved. Now, the individual that was shot, he was wounded, so he lived. Now, as I continue the news story, for everybody in West Lafayette, Indiana, you don't know where West Lafayette, Indiana is. Again, it's home of my Purdue Boilermakers. Now, West Lafayette police made an arrest in the connection to a shooting that occurred in the parking lot of the West Lafayette Walmart. I have been to that West Lafayette Walmart as well. Now, according to WLPD, 18-year-old Cade Monroe Davies Gaiata of Lafayette was taken into custody right around 10 a.m. Monday morning. Davis Gaeta was arrested after a search warrant was served at his home in Athens, Indiana. Davis Gaeta faces a preliminary charge of robbery while armed with a deadly weapon resulting in serious bodily injury. Davis Gaeta was also wanted on an outstanding arrest warrant through the Lafayette Police Department. Now, Again, let's let's go back and examine this. And when I do news stories, I do commentary, and I like to ask questions. Okay, if he had an arrest warrant, why was he released? Now, was this arrest warrant a misdemeanor? Was it a felony? See, the problem with the justice system here in America is yes, you're going to be proven you're going to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, again, Davis Gaeta, although he looks Caucasian, I say he's Caucasian, it sounds more like a Spanish name. Now, I'm just going to say this. We talk about all the large cities like Chicago, Indianapolis, New York, Detroit, Milwaukee, St. Louis, Baltimore, Washington, Houston, Cleveland, Cincinnati. Um, you might say Philadelphia is another one. Wilmington, Delaware is another one. You can say Portsmouth, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia is pretty bad. Charlotte is getting bad. Miami, New Orleans, Dallas, you name it. We talk about all the crime being in the big cities. But I'm going to tell you something. You don't hear about what goes on in the smaller cities. Now, here's what I believe is happening, though. There's been a migration from the larger cities into the smaller cities. Now, here is my belief. Well, there's a lot of gentrification going on, and your wealthy people are going back into the city. So what that is doing is basically displacing all of the individuals who were in the larger cities. They're, they're coming out to the smaller cities, and they're bringing the same havoc. I know I live here in Indiana, and you have places like Gary, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana, Michigan City, Indiana. And if you go further down, right around Louisville, Kentucky, there's Jeffersonville, Indiana. And of course, you even have a little bit going on in places like Fishers, Indiana. And one of the worst cities I can tell you here in Indiana is Muncie, Indiana. And Anderson, Indiana. I mean, their crime rate is spinning out of control as well. It's even worse than Fort Wayne, Indiana. And Fort Wayne, Indiana is Indiana's second largest city. And of course, you can 
for the third largest city, Evansville, Indiana. Now, you have to look at this. Crime, and I'm talking about crime with a deadly weapon. Now, when I do these news stories, because I generally deal with African-American YouTube, I try to present balance because what I see most of the brothers who come on YouTube, they see everything from their standpoint and the number of them live in black areas. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There are just as many ruthless Caucasians out there, and I live around that. I can tell you right now, here in Lafayette, Indiana, uh, there was a shooting at a Walmart here months ago where a woman was shot in a parking lot. There was also a shooting at the Subaru plant at the NHK building where they make seats for Subarus. And that's in Frankfurt, Indiana. There was also a shooting air and a woman was killed. Now, a woman was shot in the head at Subaru. And that's the Subaru plant right here in my city of Lafayette, Indiana. So regardless of where you go, you have to be on your P's and Q's. Although the numbers are saying that violent crimes are going down, you have to be aware of the numbers because what you see now are individuals, they're getting weapons and they're causing havoc. Now, gun control isn't going to stop anything. I know the liberals want gun control. What you have to do is enforce the laws on the books. You have to give hardened criminals harsher punishments. You cannot let them out in the street. Now, I know Illinois, they were letting criminals out in the street. Now, I will say this, living here in Indiana, I do believe that there are a number of migrants coming in from Chicago. Some are also coming down from Gary. Now, if you look at the old organization, let's say individuals were dealing drugs. What happens, particularly in the large city or large cities, well, drug game played out, became saturated. So what do the drug dealers do? They move into the smaller cities to get more customers. I'm just giving you an example. Well, living here in Lafayette, Indiana, which 60 miles northwest of Indianapolis and 123 miles southeast of Chicago, you can see the influx right along 65. A lot of your crimes are taking place in town, right along I-65. I know in Beach Grove, right in that area, there was a shooting at a mall there, right around Christmas time. Now, I'm doing a job out there on I-465 in the Indianapolis area. Went in, I believe it was two Fridays ago. My co-worker told me there was a shooting right off 82nd Street. And that's in Indianapolis. And it was at a strip mall. And I can tell you, some of these areas that were once prosperous are becoming a war zone. Now, you have to look at what's going on here. Lack of jobs. I know there are some people that don't want to work, but also you have employers out here who want to get everything out of somebody, but they don't want to pay them. So some individuals are frustrated. Some individuals may have lost their jobs. You also have lack of family structure. The education system is broken. And I'm talking about for everybody. 
we're teaching more about transgenderism and not accepting pronouns such as him, he, she, her. We're talking about intersexuality and all this bull crap. Feminism. That's not doing anything for the person who's coming up without family structure. They're born poor. Now, we all know right from wrong. However, I'm not making an excuse or any excuses for anybody who comes from a bad environment. But what I am saying is this. I've seen a real uptick in violence since the coronavirus. And why is that? Because people had cabin fever. They were restricted to do what they wanted to do. I mean, it hasn't been the same since 2020 and 2021. Now we're in 2023, and all I see on TV and all I see on some of the YouTube news networks is, is violence. And I'm going to report it because what I'm going to continue to do on my channel, I'm just going to do a lot of news. I'm not going to have panels for a while. I like the pre-recorded content. And what I'm just showing you here in this video is no matter where you live, you have to watch your back. Now, here in my city of Lafayette, there was a shooting and four people, I believe, died in an apartment complex here in Lafayette, Indiana. Now, Lafayette, Indiana, West Lafayette, Indiana, this is a college town. However, I see the wrong element is moving into this city. And the worst element that you have that's going to move into a city, and I know Joe Biden wanted this. He wanted to take poor people and move them into the suburbs, which that will decrease the property value. And this is where you're going to have more white flight. Because what's happening is a number of your Caucasians with that gentrification going on in the cities, they're just going to move right back to the cities and put businesses in the cities. And it won't be too long before some affluent blacks also move back to the cities. And if you don't believe me, this is what happened back in the early 70s when Maryville became a town because a number of individuals left Gary, Indiana, and they created Maryville. Once the steel mills closed down in Gary, Indiana, everything else closed down. And when you don't have any work or work paying good wages, individuals underemployed, you're going to have some crimes that take place. A lot of us have been told we have to go to college so we can get a job. Even engineering degrees, and I hear individuals talking about social science degrees like psychology and women's studies. Yes, those degrees don't pay, but some engineering degrees, they don't really pay big money either unless you have a license. I'll tell you right now, with STEM, the hottest area in STEM, and it's going to become saturated, is IT. Now, there's another hot area in engineering called industrial engineering. You have to know a lot of statistics. But in order for you to get individuals into those fields, they have to be pretty good in math and science. Well, when you're coming out of an area that is very poor, you're going to have individuals that are going to commit crime. Why? Because that's what they know. That's what they see. They didn't come from the proper family structure that taught them anything. Now, even living in cities that aren't the size of Chicago, you have trailer parks out here. Now, in Franklin, Indiana, there was a shooting there. You have a lot of meth there. And what I'm telling you is some of these cities where white folk live, and you have the same types of crimes. Now, what is the difference? The difference is 
white people, they shun the lower class of white people where black people don't. They want to include everybody. Well, shout out to my man, Brother Nate. You talk about separating. You have to separate yourselves from the bad people. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody who comes from the trailer park or everybody who comes from the hood is bad. Because you have some bad people who come from the affluent areas. They've become very spoiled and entitled. Now, I realize that a number of us are out here battling for survival. But when you're having silly shootings at Walmarts, just like that shooting in Chesapeake, Virginia, at a Walmart, because the manager or the, the, the I call him the shift manager, was upset. He shot a number of his co-workers. He was African-American and then shot himself. Well, when you work at certain jobs that don't pay you any money, the turnover is very high, the work is very intense, and you have bad management, you're going to have some individuals that are going to fly off the handle. And the problem is, People aren't getting paid enough on these jobs and they're getting beaten down and threatened that if you don't do A, B, C, D, and E, you're going to be fired. And I'm talking about a lot of these states are right to work states. They can fire you for anything. Now, it might seem like I'm going off in tangents. And no, I'm not. What I'm doing is giving you examples of why we have some of the violence taking place. Again, we have these boys coming up. There's no man to teach them because we've made everything about what women want, women's empowerment, but we've left the boys behind. And that's in every race. Bottom line is, if we don't help men out, nothing is going to get built. I don't care about what a number of women say women do not build anything. They want to integrate themselves into something that's already built because they don't want to compete because they can't compete out here in the real world with men, even though they think they're equal to men. What I said, equal. Men and women are different. But the bottom line is, all these shootings that have taken place, They've been seen a couple of African American police in Memphis. They beat up a guy, another brother at that. Again, the shooting in Chesapeake, Virginia, at Walmart, the shooting in Buffalo, because you had some white supremacists up there, just like down in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, I believe a number of these are going back to the copycats of what happened in Columbine back in 1999. But if you put everything together, what's happening is you have a society that only a certain amount of people are running. And I'm a Gen Xer. We Gen Xers, sometimes it's very hard to get ahead because the early baby boomers have everything. They co-opted the system for themselves. And some of the silent generation people, they're the ones who made out like bandits. They didn't have to deal with 401k K plans because the companies that they worked for in the 40s, 50s, and the early 60s, they were allowed to work for 30 years and get a good pension. Nowadays, you cannot. And if you think about it, the money was less than, but the dollar was worth more. But if you look at the cost of goods and services now, they're much higher. And gas is fluctuating in some places between now 339 and 359 here. Cars are expensive. Now, I don't agree with Grown kids living at home, but I know why they are living at home. 
because the economy has made everything so expensive so they cannot survive out it. And with college degrees, the cost of tuition has gone up. Whether you major in a BS major or a STEM major, you're left with a lot of debt. And when you go out and work for an employer, you're, make, you're making basically, unless you've gone to a, the community college route and then transferred to a state university, most of us who've gone to college have some type of student loan debt. And a job isn't going to help pay for that. So looking at everything around here as well, that's causing some tension. Also, you have some individuals, in my humble opinion, who need therapy. They may look normal, but they're not normal. Some of them need to be put in a mental institution. But the bottom line, when it comes to what's going on, there's a problem. And I can tell you the problem starts the leadership in this country. They don't do anything regardless of what party you're in, spew lies. And you still have one generation who's running this country, the baby boomer generation. And you might have some Gen Xers and some millennials in power, but you still have a lot of old baby boomers. And in the end, it doesn't mean anything to them because they've taken everything from us who are taxpayers and they've basically gerrymandered all the districts so they can stay in power. This is why you have career politicians. But in the end, when it comes to regular average show, he's just a modern day slave. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some STEM content, check out my QI, uh, QCIS channel. Again, check out the QCIS channel. On that channel, I'll give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, if you cannot find the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show on YouTube, or the QCIS channel on YouTube. You can check both of those channels out on my Twitter page. Now, for the QCIS channel, I take it one step further since it is an educational channel. Also find the QCIS channel on my LinkedIn page. And in the end, be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But if the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. Once again, thank you for listening to this edition of the full one one Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening. God bless you. I'm out.